My research is part of uh, a larger project um, that is called Sonic Skills, the role of sound and listening in science, technology and medicine since the 1920s. It covers a, a, wa a wide range of cases uh, from car mechanics to geophysicists and field scientists and, and my focus is on field science in which I investigate how um, historically and culturally scientists have made use of sound and listening in their work. I do historical work, which means that uh, a lot of my work has consisted of doing archival research, but I've also uh, spent some time with uh, scientists and researchers, with recorders uh, nowadays, um, to, see, to see what they are doing and uh, to, to talk to them and, and to try to experience a bit for myself as well what it means to, to go out in the field and to, to record burn. What's interesting, I think, is the, the contrast between or, or how listening has, has changed historically or culturally as a, as a method of scientific investigation. Um, if you look, for instance, at the 1920s or the 1910s, then um, science, scientific uh, study of sound, of bird sound, was very much focused on musical notations, for instance. These scientists would go out in the field and record bird song in, in musical notation, and, uh, and, and, and that meant that, that being a scientist also implied having a good grasp of, of music and of uh, composition, for instance, and that contrast, for instance, to the 1960s when um, new kinds of devices uh, that visualized sound uh, became important uh, and where, where, where listening to sound apparently did not matter that much anymore, at least in the discourse of these scientists themselves. This research is first of all relevant uh, for, uh, for people in my field, historians and sociologists of science who are interested in the practice of science. Um, but I think it's also important, it also sheds a new light on, um, on, on the, the, the sort of the role of science in culture. And I think that's of, of wider relevance for, for a wider audience as well, to realize that science is never apart from culture, but also never, never stands apart from culture, but is, is part of a culture itself. This university and this faculty in particular has a very open and stimulating environment um, in which people are at the same time receptive for such abstract, quite sometimes abstract ideas and at the same time are also critical and, and push you to make the most of that and I think that combination uh, I found elsewhere as well but it's in particular here at this faculty and I appreciate it a lot.